everyone, and welcome to today's episode of the vlog. So in today's episode, we're gonna take a little bit of a change of direction. Yes, the garage is still coming along and there's lots of work being done, but we'll bring that to you next week. Now, the reason why we're changing step this week is A, let's bring some more car content back into the channel. That's what you, most of you are here for, in fact, all of you are here for. And B, I was invited to an event that I've been trying to get on for a little while. It was the SMMT um, car event. Um, and what that is, it's a day where the press, media, and social influencers can come together and drive some of the top manufacturers' vehicles for the day. And there were some big players there, Porsche, VW, Audi, um, to name but a few, um, Alfa Romeo. Um, yeah, loads of, loads of manufacturers there. <laughs> more cars you can shake a stick at and basically it gave us the opportunity to be able to drive those vehicles over the next few weeks i'll be bringing you some of the um, reviews that i've done now it is a challenging place to do reviews because unlike a normal review that i would do where i get out and look at the car uh, in detail um you know uh, basically driving positions tech that's in the car that's a big thing that I'm focusing on when I do reviews what tech's in the car um, we weren't able to really do that because the um, Millbrook Proving Ground which is where the event was held they have very strict control about where you can go and um, getting out of the car you cannot get out of the car while you're on the, the, the various routes so we weren't able to do the reviews that I would like but the reviews that you'll see and there's two cars we're going to have a look at um, basically, you know, they're giving you my impression of the vehicle. Now, the cars that I've driven today that you're going to see, they are my hero cars. And yet, I was disappointed, but not for the reason that you think that I was. We'll come on to that in the end, but let's take a look at the first car, the RS3. Now, I've not driven an RS3 before, so this was a real special moment for me. And I wanted to start off with the RS3 because starting off with an R8, well, you can only come down from that. So for, actually I drove quite a few. I, I drove about four Audis. I drove the um, um, e-tron, e-tron GT, the uh, Q4, the, um, the electric Q4, the RS3, as well as the R8, the um, the latest R8 with the, um, the rear wheel drive V10, which was fantastic. But anyway, let's see the first car. Now, you know they say never meet your heroes because you'll be greatly disappointed. I'm in an RS3, the latest generation. This is the first time that I've ever driven an RS3. And visually, this car is absolutely fantastic. Now, I'm at an SMMT event and I am literally just taking this car around the Millbrook Bowl and I've been kindly invited by the SMMT to spend a day driving and testing cars. Now, this is a car that I've been wanting to drive for I don't know how long and being in my hero car, I should be disappointed, but I'm not. Because although I've seen these cars and press release and I've seen other YouTubers review them, actually being inside it, this car is just feels really solid. I mean, it is literally well precise, well proportioned. You point the car, she goes. Now what we're going to do, we're going to take this car on two routes. We've got the red route, which is a high-speed bowl, which we're going to go on. And we've also got the hill route. So we're going to start off, first of all, on the hill route, and we're going to see how we get on. Now, unfortunately, the hill route is limited to 55 miles an hour, but the red route isn't. Now, I've already driven um, the Q4, the electric Q4, this morning. And this car feels so much more different. I mean, it is like night and day in terms of the feel of this car. Already, I'm feeling a lot more confident in this car. It feels a lot, a very familiar place because obviously I have an S3 and this just feels better. Audi, you've done a really good job with this. But of course, the best thing about this car is the sound. Yes, that extra five pop engine, uh, five pop cylinder engine. The sound on it is just divine. Now hopefully you're going to be able to see 
my screen and we're gonna give it some beans as we go down the hill route. Just gonna adjust my camera. And then we'll see how we get on. Okay, so let's go. So we'll start off with the Oh there it is and there's the power. And like I said, already you just feel very, very a, a lot more confident. The car basically goes where you want it to go. But when I came down here in the um, other car, I'm going to go in the middle lane here because it's uh, we can avoid these uh, hill bumps. There we go. That's much more smoother. And then we give it some beans. Now the hill road here is, it, it represents an, an alpine hill, um, circular hill road. So there's a lot of twisty bits, a lot of bumpy bits. And the car's very controlled. We've got a 20 miles an hour section here. And a marshal, so we've got to behave ourselves. But even on the even on the brakes, she's pretty good. And of course, she picks up really well. If anything, the only if I had one criticism, and I've got to criticize this car in one thing, these aren't the best seats for holding you in place. But if that's the only criticism that I have on this car, we're on a good we're on a good run. Bag into a seatbelt. And it's a shame this is only 55 mile an hour, but hopefully on a high speed run we'll get a better we'll get a better go. And of course the one thing I do love about these cars is the DSG but um I'm gonna say Bart she changed it down and I put the Alpine I think it wants to overtake me Actually, the, um, this, this uh, circuit here, the hill run is really quite, really, I hope you can see it on the camera. But something that the camera doesn't do sometimes is give it, show the hill how it really is. Because there's a lot of steep, steep sections on here. But anyway, let's go back to driving. So it does give you a lot of confidence, this car. The brakes are, Precise and pointed. Get a little jump. You kind of know where the car is going to be. There's nothing worrying about the car. The car doesn't make you feel like you, you're going to lose control at any point. I mean, I've got two fingers. That's how much control I have. Whereas the Q4 that I came up here was a very heavy. Um, it just felt so unpredictable. Whereas this one doesn't. It feels a lot more predictable. Okay. Now the great thing about doing the red run is I can legally break the speed limit. So once I go into lane four, which I'm going in now, I can now do 100 mile an hour. Do 
130s in the outside lane, but we're not allowed to go in the outside lane today. But cruising around doing kind of motorway speeds, this car feels really comfortable. It was really comfortable actually. Now the RS3 was fantastic. It literally lived up to everything that I expected that car to be. So I was looking for something that was gonna be more dynamic than the S3, which the RS3 is supposed to. And of course, this is the latest iteration, iteration of the RS3. Did it disappoint? Not in the slightest. That car was nimble, it was great to drive, it was comfortable to drive, it was very predictable. And I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean that in a great way, if you throw it into a corner the car will reward you so um, driving it around was just a joy so um, let's on let's go on to the next car but before we do we're gonna have a, a short little break uh, from our sponsor and it's not gonna be as long as it was last week I promise you but uh, car vertical now I don't know about yourselves but the biggest hassle that I find when I'm buying a new car is getting all the information that I need all in one place. I mean, you've got to search all these various different websites. You've got to get a HPR report. You then got to check when the AMRTs, are they consistent, etc. Has there been any form of damage? All of that information in various different sites. Well, not anymore because our sponsor today, Car Vertical has all that information all in one place. Car Vertical is available in 20 different countries and gathers data from insurance companies, salvage uh, websites, and other sources. Essentially, Car Vertical lets you see whether the car that you're about to buy is as pure as an angel, or might even have a bit of a checkered pass. Mm. Let me show you what I mean. Check out my screen. Okay, so let's take a look at this sample report here. So this report is for a Volkswagen Passat and already we're seeing some issues that we've got a mileage discrepancy, the mileage has been tampered, the car has been stolen and it's been in an accident. But don't worry, there's no finance on the car. Looking at the activity, we can see where the car was made in Germany, but look down here. The car has also been used as a rental car and has been exported. Stolen vehicle check shows that the car has been reported as stolen. And then when we look at the mileage, it's more like a ride on a roller coaster, up and down. So, yep, this car has definitely been, um, the clock's been wound back on, on a number of occasions. Damage, well, we can see that this vehicle has been in the damage. It was recorded in the United Kingdom. And if we go down below, we should probably see that this vehicle has got some pictures of the damage. And look at that. This car was in a right state. So if you were looking at this car to buy and it looked straight to you on the forecourt, you'd certainly walk away from this one. So as you can see, there's a lot of benefits in using car vertical. So if you're planning to buy yourself a new car and you wanna check it out, or even if you just want to check out the status of your car, check out the link in the description below and you will be able to save yourself a nice bit of cash. So I want to thank Car Vertical for sponsoring this video. Now back to the video. Right, next car, the R8. I don't need to introduce this car. This car was probably one of the reasons why I started this channel. But anyway, let's have a look at the review. Okay, so you join me in an R8, a car that I've always wanted to drive for such a long time. And a car that I can really, really really look forward to so this is hero car number two uh this is the audi r8 this is the latest r8 this is the rear wheel drive version and it's the v10 so it is a spectacular beast and if i'm honest with you i never thought i'd see the day when i'd be driving one of these but here we are taking this car out and we're going to take this car on the Alpine route and we're also going to take it on the um, high-speed bowl route. Now, in terms of its driving position, these bucket seats really hold you very well, very well indeed. In fact, I am really comfortable in this car and the seating position is just probably just a little bit short for my sort of six foot two frame. But in terms of uh, visibility and traction this car really has it all it, it is every 
bit of impressive as you see it when you drive it. So it's about as hard on the road as my um, my Golf GTE, but a lot more sophisticated in its in its drive. You you, you know you could have, you could pretty much every day this car. and you'll probably make it a little worth or less but in terms of its uh, drivability it's great and the sound of that V10 just behind you <laughs> phenomenal absolutely phenomenal it is a hard ride but I expect nothing less of a car like this it's a supercar well supercarish nevertheless it is impressive find us way around this course now so we are looking for the alpine route which is the yellow route unfortunately there's a car in front of me because i would like to give this car some beans but there's a kia in front of me How does this compare to the S3 or the RS3? Well, this is a much more refined version. Five more cylinders, obviously. Marshall with his flag. He's obviously looking to see if I'm doing over 55. I am not Mr. Marshall, I'm doing 45. And I'm not close to the car in front of me as well. But the BMW is kind of close to me. Going around the corner on this this car gives you, even though it's rear wheel drive, which is really, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that Audi have actually gone down the rear wheel um, road. Because normally our Audis are famous for watch on. But nevertheless, they have. And I must say, the driving position in this car is brilliant, it really is. Got like that sharp hairpin bend. And it's just like nothing to this car. It gives you a lot of confidence, a lot of confidence. This is probably the most confident Audi that I've driven all day. In fact, the most confident Audi that I've driven ever. You can really throw it around the corners and feel that the car will, won't let go. And on these Alpine roads, there are some real blind spots that you, if you take them the wrong way, can be quite unforgiving so like this corner here I'm taking it no braking on the previous two cars that I drove around I had to really brake it literally it just feels like a gold car that's how it feels it literally feels like a gold car so much so, I want to do this again. <laughs> I think I might have to do the old Alpine route again. Just to make sure I did it right, you know. In terms of research and development, of course. Right, so we're going to go on the bowl, the famous uh, Millbrook Road. We're going to put the car into sports mode. And then we're going to go. I went on to do another couple of more laps in that car because that car was everything that I imagined it to be and some. It was just a phenomenal car to drive. It was a real joy to drive. And in fact, I went around the Alpine route again 
in sports mode, the whole way around in sports mode, and it was nice and clear. And there lies the problem. You see, both cars, the RS3 and the R8, were phenomenal to drive, and I just didn't have enough time to spend with the cars, to really get to know the cars, to get under the DNA, to find out what each of those buttons did. Um, it was just, you know, I mean, I must have spent half an hour with each car, which is longer than a lot of people spend, to be fair, but it was just not conducive to um, uh, doing a, a real review and to really get to know the vehicle. And there lies the problem. I just didn't get enough time to spend with the cars. Those are my two hero cars, and I literally had a glimpse of uh, what those cars could really do. And, and the Milbrook Proving Ground is really great in the sense that you can go over the speed limit and you can drive down an Alpine style road. But it's not like living with a car for real, driving around your streets, driving around your favorite roads. You know, it's a make-believe road in a make-believe scenario. So I'd really love to spend some more time with those vehicles and give you a more comprehensive view. Because those cars, both of those cars, there's more to them than just driving them, you know. Everyone has done reviews and driving them, but there's a lot of tech in that car that doesn't get exposed. And Audi have spent a lot of time and money in making those techs um, that they've installed in those cars uh, more user-friendly and also um, giving you those driver-centric aids that they have. And yet, I weren't able to play with that. Disappointing. But it is what it is, and that's what that event is designed for, so you can get a glimpse, and then you can obviously uh, uh, maybe drive again later. So it was a great event. Like I said, I really enjoyed myself. I met some really nice people, um, and I met some really good, hopefully some good contacts. And I met a few other YouTubers as well, um, including Petrol Ped and um, Joe Achilles, both really down to earth nice guys so it was nice to meet those guys too but let's end this on a good note um because there was nothing bad about driving those cars just so to end on a high i want to thank louise michelle and katie from aldi for really giving me the opportunity to drive those cars because there was lots of people coming on their stand and they um allowed me to be able to you know to go out and, and enjoy both those vehicles and I was really grateful for that. So thank you ladies, uh, you worked hard then that day and I appreciate um, the opportunity and being able to drive those vehicles. Okay, so that's it for this week. Don't forget to subscribe down here and click on the bell notification so that you are notified whenever we release a new video. And like I said, there's other vehicles that I will bring out um, over the next few weeks, um, as well as the garage, because the garage is coming along. Um, but it kind of went downhill from there, because once you kind of drove in an RA, everything else is kind of inferior. But like I said, we've got some other reviews. So tell me what you think down below. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video as well, um, because that's really great and it helps me to kind of focus where we need to be. In the meantime, we will see you next week and have a good one.